I'm Anna. And I'm Fran. And you're listening to Murder Words. Welcome back to Murder Words. Okay, so right before we started, I was like, I'm just going to touch this button and see what happens on our... um, recorder thing recorder thing <laughs> yeah like the, the the device we used to record anyway this is what happens <gasps> <laughs> or when fran makes a funny joke i hope you guys can hear that i hope and you it's can just too, not coming through our headphones just- <laughs> <laughs> so like encouraging notes <laughs> just when she says <laughs> jazz music mm. so anyway this we, is so much fun right now i know no one else probably wants to hear this but i, I know really people are probably this. like can we just get on with the story but anyway um if you hear those noises that's what it is <laughs> i'm gonna be tempted but it's fine i'm not gonna touch it again i promise oh god that would be tempting. It's so tempting. I know. I want you to hit one again. Just one more time. Just one more time. <laughs> that's like we have our own talk show or something. I know. Like we're just walking out and that's our theme music. I'm imagining like David Letterman or something. Right Exa- now. That's exactly what it's like. Okay. Well, that was exciting. So. Fran has a story for us today. I don't know what it is, but I watched her practice the pronunciations of the names. I'm trying, okay. Before we start. <laughs> All I know is there's a Gabrian. Yes. That's so. exactly who we're talking about today. <laughs> Marvin right. Gabrian. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, we can just get right into it. And me practicing was just for that one time because that's the only time I'm going to say that. The rest of the time it's going to be referred to as Marvin. But I wanted to get that one right. Okay. Gabrielle. Okay. So Marvin <laughs> was born on October 18th, 1953. His room of crime is absolutely crazy. But like before we get into that, we're going to like talk about like who he was and I'm not going to tell you what happened. Okay. Until the end. And it's it's a wild one. Okay. okay this guy. I'm ready. So Marvin was the fifth of six children in his family. It was three boys, three girls. Um, and he was described by his siblings as happy all the time and seemed to get along with everybody. Um, one of his siblings described him as a bit shy and quiet. Growing up, his teachers described him as a kid who stayed out of trouble and had no you know, issues, never went to the principal's office, anything like that. Um, he had a very high IQ of 121. But he did very poorly in school. Like, he had got really bad grades. Like he was bored or something? I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. Like, he wasn't challenged right. enough? Yeah. In his senior year, he ended up missing, like, a lot of school. And that's why I probably, like, he, I imagine he was just bored at that point. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, even his girlfriend, his high school girlfriend, described him as a nice guy, fun, loving, and sweet. His brother said he was a total nerd. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Just, like, an awkward little like boy growing up yeah one problem marvin's parents were absolutely awful his dad was super mean um and was known to have a bad temper he once like repeatedly slammed marvin's head into a two by four because what? yeah like they're really mean dad was super mean he picked on him all the time too like just called him like dumb names and stuff like that um he once slammed him in the head with a two by four because marvin had been trying to like burn some trash near the house and he didn't want him to do that, so he just, like, started beating him up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when Marvin was a young child, he became very ill, and his dad was like, you're not going to the doctor. I don't know if he thought he was faking it or what. Um, it was not until Marvin came down with a very, very high fever and started acting strange that they were like, okay, let's take him to the doctor. Doctors diagnosed him with pneumonia, and they had to do an operation on him to remove a leather-like material from his lungs. What? They let it go on for so long that they actually had to what? remove a piece of his lungs. Oh, it was a piece of his lungs yeah, that just, like, turned to leather? Yeah, it was leather-like. This is very Carl Panzram with mm. the ear infection yes, and it the is. dad. And it very much is. You're right. 
Um, the parents were like hard, hardly ever home. His brothers and sisters raised him basically. Um, when Marvin was like 12, the family moved to Michigan. Um, and at one point, Marvin's father, I guess, like leaves the primary home and moves out, but he only comes like back on the weekends and stuff like that to visit with his family, which they probably were like, dang it. Yeah. Like, don't come back. <laughs> um, mom was no better. Um, one time she took David and like actually like left the marriage and moved in with another guy for several months, you know, just confusing him yeah. all around. Um, on another occasion, she had a nervous breakdown um, and the children were removed from the home. But then they came back. And after they came back, she even took them to go, like, siphon gas from a person's car oh, one time. Like, yeah. Like, normal. They were, they were normal were, loving mom activities. <laughs> what you think? Um, so, one time, you know, Marvin's sisters were keeping taking care of him because mom and dad were always gone doing whatever. Um, and he fell ill and developed a really high fever. He became delirious, and he actually walked outside in the snow. Like, his siblings just found him lying in a snowbank. Like, he keeps just getting ill and just having these really high fevers, and no one's taking care of him. So, yeah, yeah obviously... He was probably trying to bring his fever down. Probably. That's what I would think, too. Like, yeah, you know, let me go outside and sit in the snowbank. Um, so, you know, his parents were super toxic, and were both, of course, like, you know, naturally were having affairs and violent arguments pretty regularly. Um, Marvin described his mother actually throwing a butcher knife at his dad one time. And here's the really sad part. When Marvin talks about his upbringing, he said, quote, he had a pretty much normal household. It probably was normal to him. Yeah. Isn't that just sad? That's really sad. Yeah. I thought that was really sad. Um, Later on, his brothers um, ended up um, developing substance abuse histories, and they both spent long periods of time in jail. What, What year... What time frame is this? Or this what is nineteen uh, sixties? Oh, okay, early seventies. So we're gonna skip a lot of it and go ahead to adult Marvin. Okay, okay. So it seems like something flipped with Marvin, like right out of school, like immediately that senior year, something happened. Um, it doesn't really say. I couldn't really find what. I heard there were some allegations of, like sexual abuse, but nothing was like really documented that would make like he sexually abused someone else or he was being he was being sexually abused. okay i don't know exactly i couldn't find really anything with proof attached to it um through this case i ran i read like all the court documents of yeah. this case like this is just what was coming out of the court documents so his most known crimes did not occur until he was around the age of 43 but before that you can see a pattern of build up from him it also seems like he was very sporadic in his early crimes. Like, they just randomly happen. And some of his crimes were... He set fire to two people's homes after they had an argument with Marvin. Like, he straight up went home, got gas, went back and lived their houses. What? Yeah. He shot up a guy's house with a rifle once. Um, because the guy was like... They were having a party and the guy was like, Dude, you're getting rough. You need to go. And so he... Just went into his house, got a rifle, and shot his house up. He escalated very quickly. Very quickly. I mean, um, he... The police found him at his trailer, passed out um, with the rifle above his head and shell casings in his truck. But he tried to say he was framed. And you'll see a pattern with that. It was adamant that he had been framed his entire life. Um, one person called the police because Marvin aimed a rifle at her and her two-year-old daughter. Oh, my gosh. So, the woman, like, got... A baby. A baby. He was, like, was sitting there in his house, like, aiming his gun out the window at them. And so, the woman decides to get in her car and leave. Yeah. Um, with her kid. And then Marvin followed her for, like, miles until she lost him. And she did report that to police. Wow. Um, a family member told police that Marvin had beat him up punched his wife and teenage son in the face because Marvin was playing a card game at their house and basically the family member interrupted the card game to get heart medication for Marvin's uncle. Like Marvin's uncle was even there and he like interrupted his card game so he just like jumped up and started beating him and then went after his son and wife too. I guess he caused like some real damage with them too. 
just randomly attacked him. I am blown away yes. by his level of anger. It's so out of nowhere. Angry. Um, one person um, came forward and claimed that he had raped her. No charges were ever filed, though. Um, in 1995, um, Marvin started uh, cashing fraudulent SSI checks of a man named Robert Allen, whose house he was also living in. Uh, Robert was disabled, um, and he received disability from the government because of that. Um, and Marvin was always known to be a heavy drinker. And he was, the SSI checks, he was not, looking back, they found out that, that he was cashing his checks. Oh, okay, so he was never charged with it. Okay, so here, <laughs> we're going to start. Are we ramping up I for know, something? I know, we are. We're ramping up for the crazy, Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to stop talking about Marvin for a minute. Okay. And we're going to focus on a woman named Rachel Timmerman. Okay. Have you ever heard of her? No. Okay. This is going to blow your mind. Rachel was born April 6, 1978 in Michigan. Okay. This all happened right there in Michigan. Okay. Couldn't find a lot of information about Rachel growing up. There were some like key points. It doesn't sound like maybe one or two things like dramatic happened. Um, yeah. It said she came from a broken home. Um, I did not find any kind of evidence that her parents were abusive in any kind of way. I think they just mean that they divorced at some point. Okay. And I don't like that they said broken home when her parents divorced. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they seem like lovely people. Um, like, they really seem like they love they love her. Yeah. Um, so, Rachel did have, you know, like I said, some issues. Um, at 17, um, she started dabbling a little bit into drugs. Um, and she ended up having to drop out of high school because she became pregnant with her daughter, Shannon. Um, she also got, a trouble, got in some trouble at 18 um, over drugs. Um, she spent a little bit of time in jail, but she was sentenced to probation ultimately. Yeah. So not, you know, just a little dabbling. I think it was just marijuana too. It wasn't anything like right. super hard, super crazy. Um, just what happened. So on August 6th, 1966, at the time, uh, you know, Rachel was, you know, they're all living in Michigan. Um, and Rachel had this really weird friend named Wayne Davis. Wayne Davis was a disabled veteran who, he walked with a limp. Um, he was just basically the opposite of Rachel in every single way, but she right. liked him, like, as a friend. You know what I mean? There's no, right. like, romantic. It was just, I don't know if she found him nifty or what. <laughs> Not nifty. Yeah. Um, he had a metal plate in his head from getting shot in Vietnam, and he suffered from PTSD. He never went anywhere without his um, M65 Army field jacket, which he um, only usually joked that, that was like the only thing keeping his thin body from falling apart. Like he's just this old man, old <laughs> war veteran. You know what I mean? Just, just you know, they raged on him, drank together, and they played cards together. They just had a good okay. time. He probably enjoyed telling her some weird stories, and she was yeah. probably just like, "Okay, old man." Let's drink and play cards. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> but Wayne was um, one of those people. Um, it seemed like he made friends with everybody. Um, and that he had, quote, the re police report said that he had an unusually wide circle of friends. So he just was a good dude. It's really just yeah, like he was just everyone like, loved him. Everyone loved him. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's probably just like, you know, crazy Wayne yeah. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you about his metal plate in his head. Um, so on august 6th um, i was so tempted to just d -d 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 <laughs> stop it okay oh my god only time sorry okay. <laughs> <laughs> on august 6th this is okay this is serious. on august 6th rachel received a call from wayne um he asked if she would come play cards um rachel had just given birth just like a couple months before this to her daughter shannon and so she was like super eager to go out she's like please let me go um i'll uh, she convinced her sister, Sarah, to actually babysit Shannon so she could go out and have some fun. Okay. You know, for a week she'd been, like, doing, like, mom stuff. And she was like, please get right. out of this house. So around 9 p.m., Rachel walked over to Wayne's house. Um, she was the only female there with a group of drunken men. That's never good. It's never good. She's also, you know, I'm getting, I'm going to tell you, she's, like, 19. You yeah. Know what I mean? So they all hung out, drinking, playing cards. They smoked weed for a while. Um... Later on, one of Wayne's friends, Marvin Gabrin, Googled it, <laughs> and Marvin's nephew, Mikey, um, he was about 14 at this time, mm -hmm. um, they arrived at the party. Um, eventually, Rachel's like, okay, it's time. I got to go home. I got a baby at home. Yeah. I got to get going. 
So um, she and Wayne, you know, left and started walking toward Rachel's house. I guess it was in walking distance. And Marvin, I guess, like pulled up beside them and asked and said, like, hey, I'm going to give you guys a ride home. And Mikey was with him, his 14-year-old nephew. So basically, like, he like, wouldn't take no for an answer. He kept pushing them, prodding them, and they were like, no, we're fine. But eventually they get in the vehicle. So they get they pull up to Rachel's house, but he doesn't stop the car. He just keeps on driving. Oh, my gosh. Creepy. Yeah. Um, he didn't let her out. He just, you know, so she's freaking out at yeah. this point. Um, Marvin then goes to this, like, old side road with a field beside of it. Um, and he makes Wayne and Mikey get out of the car, the 14-year-old nephew and the really, you know, veteran guy. I hate yeah. this. Mm-hmm. When they protested, Marvin told them basically to get the F out or else, like he was going to kill him. Wayne was super drunk at this time, um, so he couldn't really fight back with him. And Mikey yeah. was 14. What is he going to do? You know what I mean? After the two left, uh, Marvin drove off to a field with Rachel still in her car. Um, he took her to like this really isolated road. He ended up dragging her out of the car and tried to force himself on her. Uh, she fought back like really hard. She really fought back at him, biting, kicking as hard as possible. Um, and he just kept beating her. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. He punched her in the face, you know, slammed her to the ground multiple times she became disoriented um he also bit her nose causing it to like bleed oh my gosh yeah he's aggressively going at her um he kept beating her until she basically you know collapsed at this point and then at that point as you can imagine he sexually assaulted her yeah so after the event um he threatens rachel and says that if he if she ever tells anybody that he's going to come after her and her infant daughter you know, and then he's going to make her watch while it happens, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, I mean, he's, he's terrible. Yeah. And Rachel believed him. Like, she was terrified I of him. I would, too. And he, she was really afraid that he was going to, like, leave her out in the woods and no one was ever going to find her. Um, so she came up with this. Actually, it was brilliant, to be truthful with you. It was yeah. a brilliant idea. She was a fighter, man. She came up with this idea to get Marvin to take her to her house. She started to pretend to enjoy what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and she told Marvin that she wanted to keep going, but someplace more comfortable than the than this, you know, forest the area. Field, the yeah. field in the forest area. Rachel suggested her bed at her mother's house. Marvin, you know, was like, okay, yeah, let's totally do yeah, that. Yeah, excited you know I mean? about it. Yep. He said, quote, I knew you were a slut. He said, I could tell Ew. just by looking at you. But when they got to Rachel's home, um, they didn't crawl into bed. You know, they didn't, that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Rachel ran in. Uh, ahead of Marvin and then locked the door behind her. Good. Yeah. How did he not see that coming? I don't know. E- you know, ego. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, just smart thinking, though. You yeah. Know what I mean, really smart. Mm-hmm. So realizing that he'd be tricked, he like you know got super mad and kept screaming and shouting on the like banging on the door, saying like you're gonna pay for this bitch. Like his sister's yeah. there, his mom's there, like everyone's there, and he's doing this still. Um. So her sister wakes up and she finds like Rachel covered in blood. Um. You know, Rachel grabs a weapon, which turned out to be, like, just, like, this hammer that's just sitting yeah. inside their house. Um, and she, like, gets ready for him, for him to come in. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess, like, during all this, um, Wayne Davis and the 14-year-old nephew went back to her mom's house, too. Okay. So, they're there, so they're too? There, they're there, okay. too. Yes. I wouldn't want to make Wayne... No, man. There's v- the Vietnam vets with their PTSD. Yeah. So they ended up um, waking up through all this. Yeah. And then when he realized that Wayne and Mikey were there, he decided to leave. He ran after that. So Rachel's mom was even there. She called an ambulance as soon as Marvin left. Yeah. Um, a rape test was done on Rachel and DNA was collected. Um, Rachel wasn't sure if she actually wanted to press charges, though why she was scared probably for her daughter yeah marvin has a threatened shannon so she was like i don't you know at this point i would definitely believe that he was very yeah hurting me um but there was another reason why rachel didn't want to press charges and that was because um when she was five um a babysitter had raped her and nothing came of it yeah even after her parents filed that's so infuriating it is 
her parents even filed a police report and nothing happened out of it so she just thought that was going to happen again yeah and it probably would during those times yeah so marvin great marvin knows that rachel is on probation so rachel decides she is going to press charges she finally decides she's going to when marvin finds out that she's talking about it uh, Marvin retaliates and calls the her PO and says, "You know, she I was smoking weed with her while she's on probation, and so they go and arrest her." They didn't drug test her first, or they, they drug tested her. Yeah, oh, but like, she, okay. it, it was prompted by you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, they drug tested her and she went to jail for five months, right after Dang. this incident, like a week after. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so at this point. Um, she's still covered in like visible scratches and scars from her fight with Marvin. Yeah. Like she's still covered in them. Um, and Rachel did turn, she turned 19 while she was in jail. Um, and she, there's a lot of stuff recorded while she was in jail. Like she really tried like to turn herself around when she went into jail. Yeah. Um, her dad once a week would bring Shannon for visiting, um, which was always hard cause she'd have to leave right afterward. She was worried her daughter would forget who she was. Um, but she really did try to make the best of it. Um, one of her cellmates was a 27 year old woman named Charlene Madden. Um, she was in jail for prostitution, but they got along super well. And Charlene was was like a mentor towards her. Um, she had her complete her GED. She really encouraged her to complete her GED. Mm -hmm. And so she did accomplish that while she was incarcerated. Um, while Rachel was in jail, she started to receive strange letters from a person claiming to be Marvin's mother. Stop it. The it writer was Marvin. The writer begged Rachel to drop the charges against Marvin, telling her to admit she'd made up the whole rape story. But the letters also asked questions about Shannon. The writer wanted to know who was taking care of Shannon while Rachel was in jail and where that person was living. Dude. Yeah has to be terrifying yeah absolutely terrifying so nine days after rachel um you know starts her jail sentence marvin is arrested on third degree assault char- rape assault charges because of her because of chart her. okay yeah he they found evidence and good they believe that he did it so they charged him she was probably so scared oh yeah here's where it uh, gets a little worse so at the time, um, I'm going to a little bit about the facts of his arrest. At the time, he was, you know, served a warrant with a list of people who was going to be testifying against him at trial, which included. Rachel. Is that normal? Yeah, they get it. Like get the discovery know. in the discovery, they're like these are the people. Yeah, who are. Mm-hmm. How did I not know that? Yes, that seems very dangerous. Yes, for those people. That's why people are always hesitant, like you know, with drugs, like they're. So when someone tells them someone and like writes a statement against them they get the right to see that statement nothing's ever blocked out they have the right to question i the am accused. blown yeah away oh, like yeah. i guess i did know that because of the the wire buys mm-hmm. with the cameras and stuff but yeah. i don't i guess i just didn't think about like these are the people testifying against you here's yeah. the list here you go absolutely wow mm-hmm. he found out that rachel was testifying against him obviously um, his 14-year-old nephew, Mikey, was going to be testifying against him. And Wayne Davis would also be testifying against him. Um, he was looking at 15 years in prison for this. On February 3rd, Marvin is let out on bail. How After how long? Uh, let me look real quick. I think it was like a month. Stop. Actually, yeah. No, 20, 13 days. After 13 days. He was released. Rachel was still incarcerated for another 92 days after this, but he was let go. What? On bond. And you know who um, paid for his bond? Stop who? Wayne Davis. Bailed him right out. What? Mm hmm. What is happening right now? Yep. So. Stop it. Are they friends? Hello, Are they? Just, just just wait. I'm going to tell you. I am I'm blown gonna... away right now. So, less I than... really liked Wayne. Well, just hear me out, okay? Okay. Less than two weeks after Marvin was released on bail, Wayne Davis suddenly vanished. 
He was last seen alive on February 12th, 1997. Um, the next day, um, so February 13th, his girlfriend visited his house but found it was deserted. Wayne was nowhere to be found. Um, the girlfriend's name was Darlene, and she did find a note from Wayne which said that he decided randomly to move to California. However, she looked around his house and everything was still there. Nothing well, that was That wasn't planned out well. No. And particularly, his jacket that he wore all the time oh, was still there. And she that knew. held his dead body together. Yes. It was still there. So she was like, there's no way. All right. Not call me. Okay. This jacket, it's definitely going with yeah. him. <laughs> um, Darlene also noticed that Wayne's microwave oven was missing along with some stereo equipment. And these items would later be found at a consignment shop in Macosta County, which is just a few counties over from Michigan, or from where this is all happening. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and the owner of the store would identify Marvin as a man who had sold her the objects. It's going down for real. I'm confused. Yes. I have questions. So, on May 5th, 1997, Rachel was released from jail. Um, she decided to move to her dad's house instead of moving back in with her mom, like she originally was, because uh, in her mind, Marvin didn't know where her dad lived. Okay. So she, That makes sense. That was like her whole motivation about why she moved where, just to stay away from him. And her dad's name was Tim. Um, and she also lived with her stepmother, Lynn, there as well. Apparently, he had remarried. So, Marvin quickly found out where she was living, though. Um... And Rachel started telling friends and co-workers that she was, like, terrified that Marvin was coming after her. Um, like, she just felt like he was following her everywhere. You know, it like, she was having, like, panic attacks, too. Yeah. Um, one day, she randomly just ran to one of her friends' house, started locking all the doors and windows, and started, like, kept just screaming on repeat, like, he will kill me over and over again. Can you imagine being that friend? No. I'd be like, what is happening right I know. now? She's only 19, too. Like, this is... Yeah. So, on June 3rd, 1997, just, you know, a few, April, May, two months after she's been released from jail, um, she goes out on a date with a man named John Weeks. Uh, Rachel didn't really know John, but basically they had, um, he said he knew her through some other people and he just wanted to, you know, get to know her a little bit more. Rachel initially refused because, you know, she didn't know him. Yeah. would be a creep. Um eventually though he persisted and rachel agreed to go out with him john told her to bring shannon along on a date because he thought babies were adorable and she thought that he was like trying to like impress him like he was trying to impress her or something by getting involved with her kid that's so, kind of scary yeah i mean I would honestly definitely i feel not. like even my husband like i mean i met Braden first but mm-hmm. he still waited a while to like bring him around yeah that's a responsible thing to do yeah i've seen moms not do that though you yeah know what i mean it's not unusual um so rachel was in a good place at this time she was excited um to go on her date it was like her first big outing since her attack and then going doing five months in jail yeah you know what i mean this was just like something that was gonna be really good for her her family thought um you know her father told her goodbye um but unfortunately, he would never see Rachel alive again after this. Um, she never returned back from her date with John Weeks. A few days later, uh, her dad, Tim, received a letter from Rachel. The letter said that the date had gone so well that they decided to get married. Oh. They were moving to Arkansas. And the next day, they, were, they had planned they were going to elope. Again... The following day, Tim received another letter from Rachel, like back to back. And this one, she said her new husband got a new great job and they were definitely moving to Arkansas and she would not be even coming home to say goodbye, that they needed to leave immediately. Crystal Roach, who was the prosecutor in her rape case, also received a letter from Rachel. What? In this letter, Rachel admitted that she made up the rape accusations. <sighs> And she apologized for making false accusations. Stop. Was John Weeks actually Marvin? And begged the prosecutor to drop the charges, you know, against her accused. Um, 
her dad didn't really know what to make of the bizarre letters. Um, they didn't make any sense, but they were also in Rachel's handwriting. And, you know, leading up to this, Rachel hasn't shown the best decision making. Right. You know what I mean? So they're like, it's possible. We're very concerned, though. Yeah. So, you know, before Rachel disappeared, um, she started receiving call- phone calls from, from John. Um, he said that he was an occasional customer at the restaurant she worked at, and she had seen him there a few different times. Um, basically, but he hoaxed her coming in to, you know, going on a date with him and bringing Shan with her. So he's saying he had seen her, her at the, but she doesn't. She had seen him there. He oh, stopped okay. in a few times. Okay. Yeah, he said that a few times. She knew it was John Weeks. I'm so confused. I know okay, you are. Keep going. Okay. I know. <laughs> so, Rachel did not know though that John was working for Marvin all along. Why would you work for Marvin? She, he was working for Marvin. What? But why though? Like, I don't what know. is Marvin doing that all these people are like? Let me bail you out of jail. Let me right get someone for you to kill or to kill for you or yeah. whatever so john pretended to be interested in rachel to get her out on a date um all we really know is that rachel and john were out on their dates and then all of a sudden marvin did show up upon seeing marvin rachel totally freaked out and tried to run away um a witness later said that marvin around the time of her disappearance did have scratches and bruises all around her like all around his face and stuff like that like she had put up a fight yeah um, Rachel was taken out to a remote campground near Oxford Lake, which is a federal um, park, which is important. It's a federal park um, where she was coerced into writing letters, basically all the letters that were sent to her dad and the prosecuting attorney and things like that. So I have one of the letters in here I'm going to read to you. Okay. It says, this one written to her dad. It says, Dad, I'm sorry I left without saying goodbye. That guy who picked me up is like the man of my dreams. Shannon bonded with him so well, and so did I. Right now, we're on vacation. Maybe we might get eloped. He already asked me to marry him. I'll be gone for a couple of weeks. I would call you on the phone, but I think you'd try to talk me out of the marriage. I'll write more letters and send you my address when I get one. Love, Rachel. So the baby's missing, too. Baby's gone, too. Okay. So speculating, once these letters were written, uh, Rachel was handcuffed, bound, and they put chains around her connected to cinder blocks. A gag was used on her mouth and her eyes were sealed, su- t- sealed shut with duct tape. Like her entire head was covered oh in gosh. duct tape. She was then placed in a small boat and paddled out to the middle of this Oxford Lake, which is like a federal camp ground area, which inevitably they pushed her in the water. The water was actually only like a foot deep or not like a foot deep, but it was only a couple feet deep. But um, there was so much mud on the bottom of it. It was a very muddy that she just like sank into all that mud. With the center block. With the center block. her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, her parents don't know any of this has happened so far. So on June 15th, when it was her daughter Shannon's first birthday, um, and they'd heard nothing, no pictures, no letters, um, they decided to go to the police at that time. Yeah. Um, also during that time... Um, Shannon was set to test, or not Shannon, Rachel was scheduled to testify um, against Marvin. So she didn't show up for the court hearing either. So they had to drop the charges. Yeah, they ended up dropping the charges because she has to be there. She has to be there. Yeah. And even during um, her stint in jail, they had to keep continuing it because she was incarcerated. And the you know prosecutor didn't want to put her up there when she was incarcerated. Yeah. So eventually they had to drop the charges on them. So on July 5th, 1997, um, two men were out fishing and they ended up finding her body. When his dad, or when her dad heard that there was a body found in the lake, he automatically knew that it was his daughter. Yeah. Um, in which dental records did confirm. Um, so at her funeral, um, her parents actually received like so many letters from the girls that Rachel was incarcerated with. Like so many, um, saying how wonderful she was and how much she was really trying to change and just giving them so much support. Yeah. It said that the parents wrote every single one of them thank you letters. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Okay, where, I mean. So, 
Marvin's whereabouts are unknown. Around the time that uh, Rachel disappeared, Marvin disappeared too. But where's the baby? Gonna get to that. Okay. Um, of course, he was a prime su- suspect in her death. Um, a search warrant was executed for his residence, and they ended up finding keys that matched the padlocks that were used to secure Rachel's body. He didn't even throw the keys away. He kept he kept the keys. As a, I don't even know what. Okay. He literally kept the keys to the padlock that he used to throw her over with. Stupid. So stupid. And back at Marvin's house were concrete blocks stained with the same paint as the ones retrieved from her body. He really thought he was going to get away with this. Yes, he did. So, Mikey, the nephew, the 14-year-old nephew, led police to a campsite that Marvin frequently used. Um, They did find Marvin's tent there, along with some bolt cutters, chain, duct tape, a woman's hair clip, and nipples for a baby bottle. Um, Marvin's neighbors were also interviewed. Um, They reported that Marvin had a handyman named John Weeks, but they had not seen him since, um, you know, they hadn't seen him for a while. Yeah. Um, Police did contact um, John Weeks' girlfriend, who identified a photo of Marvin as a man introduced to her as Lance which was a known alien, so he went by sometimes. She reported that Lance, Marvin, um, had left the area with John and that she hadn't heard from him and was unsure of how to get a hold of him. So John disappears too. Yeah. Um, She also reported to police that on one occasion, uh, she had caught John on the phone with a girl named Rachel. And, you know, of course she was like, who's that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And when she confirmed about it, um, she was told by him that, she was try- he was trying to do Lance a favor, and Lance was interested in this girl and being, like, set up with her. And so, he was trying to help yeah. hook them up together. So, John Weeks was last seen on June 22nd, 1997. Like, just like before all this, like before the girlfriend, you know I mean? They went and interviewed her, but police said that he was found on June 22nd, 1997. And John's girlfriend said that he had left to go buy weed down in Texas with Marvin, who was Lance to her. Right. And that John never came back. It's believed that Marvin killed John Weeks in order to tie up loose ends. Again, his body's never been found, but most likely he is in that same area that Rachel was found. It was... um what's his name the other one wayne was he his body found we're gonna get to that okay so marvin's like you know committed multiple murders at this point and so he flees flees the state and went into hiding um he was eventually arrested by an fbi swat team in the state of new york he messed up so a man named robert allen who they connected with marvin um, asked for his SSI checks to be forwarded to a P.O. box in New York. So authorities knew, like, if they got Robert, they would get Marvin. Yeah. But when authorities staked out the place, they did not find Robert Allen, but Marvin impersonating Allen. To get his checks. To get his checks. Allen, after investigating, had not been seen since 1995. Stop it. And is believed to be the first victim of Marvin. Wow. Yep. So, Mar- Marvin's arrested. Yeah. And this is where, it, I mean, it's been crazy, but yeah. this is where it gets a little more wild. Okay. The trial is how I listed this above it. <laughs> the trial. <laughs> this just has its own section. It has its own section, yep. So, while in jail, he was not a very good inmate. Um, he had over 40, 40 serious marks. He got in trouble for things like he made a gun. Like, a wooden gun. How? I don't know. He did it, though. And he painted it black. I don't know where he got black paint out either. <laughs> he made a bunch of weapons from random objects. One of them was, like, um, a needle. You know what I mean? Like, he actually, like, had, like, a needle attached to something. He was going to poke people with it. He oh. found razor blades. He made, like, all these, you know, weapons out of random things. Um, and then 
he impersonated a senator, a state senator, in a phone call. He called the courthouse to try to get him transferred to another jail. I am. That's genius. I know. (laughs) How come no one's ever thought of that? Did they not have the... This is a this is call an, from... I don't know, but man, he tried. He you, tried. You are going to see some trying, okay? okay? You're about to see a lot of trying. <laughs> from the early pretrial proceedings, Marvin sought to represent himself without a lawyer. Why did they do that? I'm just listening. He began to blow up the judge with letters and writing things to his lawyer saying... They were crazy in trying to frame him. He harassed his own judge. Would not stop calling him. Um, He called his lawyer's office more than 80 times on a single day. While berating his judge's office with the same phone calls. Um, He constantly insulted the jury during even like the beginning stages of the trial. He came to court dirty one time with black marks over his forehead and the letters A-Z-Z-A on his forehead. What? I don't know what that means, okay? It's A-Z-Z-A. If it clicks later, I'll mention it, but (laughs) I don't know why A-Z-Z-A. Maybe because they were the easiest thing to write. You know what I mean? That's so weird. I don't know. He he put that on his forehead. So, (laughs) on many occasions, he had to be expelled from the courtroom because he just was acting like an idiot. Um, and they only allowed him back into the courtroom when he was restrained and wrist and ankle, like, you know, really yeah. locked in there. Um, they made him sit between two marshals. Um, and he, he made, like, all these statements, like, these crazy statements. Um, in the middle of the courtroom, he just announced one day, like, this is a quote from the court <laughs> records, okay? Okay. I'm going to, there's going to be a couple quotes right now. Okay. It said, quote, I am sorry to be forced to be represented by evil shysters in a kangaroo, in a kangaroo court in a prostitute evil nation that murders its babies by abortion. And I'll be quiet because I am being forced to, just as I, as if I were a Nazi Germany. I was a Nazi Germany. That's just one example, okay? So obviously, the judge was like, you're not representing yourself, man. Like, yeah. Like, I am literally pulling your rights. Like, you are, you're not <laughs> getting it. Okay. Um, he, but he just keeps filing all these motions and stuff. Like he's just keeps trying. Yeah. Just to mess up this court case. Um, he called in one motion um, that he submitted to the courts. He called his lawyer evil, corrupt, and a liar, and accused him of stealing eighteen hundred dollars from him. How? How? I don't know. <laughs> I'm blown away. Not the kangaroo court. Yeah, the kangaroo court. <laughs> so Shysters, is that what he said? Shysters. Shysters. Just shysters, and he's in Nazi Germany. I can't. So, during a hearing to decide if Marvin was, you know, basically if he was competent to stay in court. You know what I mean? He was able to be in court and not, like, get the de- like the insanity plea or anything. Like, make sure he was competent. Marvin interrupted the proceedings during this hearing and the following is his interaction with the judge I'm about to die I can already feel it okay. this is in the court records this is what Marvin says to his judge word by word Okay, it says Marvin dot dot <laughs> sir the victim's family and the public deserve to know the, know the truth from me the court responds sir I haven't addressed you yet You'll be quiet if you would please. Then he says to the government, you may proceed. Stop. Stop. Hold on. Marvin said that? Yes. Then you may proceed. And the government <laughs> said thank you. I am going to throw myself down the stairs. Then he states, Marvin states, my appointed counsel has destroyed evidence that Charles Cass murdered, murdered Rachel. I, Who's Charles Cass? No one knows, okay? He never made that heard up. him. I never heard him mention that, okay? There, there was nothing in there about Charles Cass, okay? The court responds, Sir, sir, either you're quiet today or you go upstairs and sit in the cell. The choice is yours. Marvin responds, My choice is to fire my counsel for being satanic and destroying satanic. evidence 
that Charles Cass murdered Rachel. The court responds, one more question, one more outburst. Marvin responds with, I have no possibility of getting a fair trial. And the court says, the judge says, take him upstairs. While this is happening, Marvin responds to the judge by saying, I have no possibility of getting a fair trial when the judge had sex with a 14-year-old girl last week and got another 13-year-old pregnant that I know of that I can take these people to right now. I have zero possibility. You're nothing but an evil Hitler. Shit bastard. Why don't you go tell why don't you go tell the FBI to go ar- go and arrest that perverted perverted bastard? I am he called his judge a Hitler shit bastard. I am blown away. He called him a pedophile. He called him a pedophile. Yeah. So, obviously the evidence was overwhelming against Marvin. Yes. Neighbors testified seeing Marvin with, around that time, a metal boat at his house. He wasn't trying to hide it. He was not very good at it. Um, They saw him with another man matching John Weeks' description. Um, And the two of them, in broad daylight, removed two cinder blocks from, from their boat, chains, and two life vests from the boat. Then Marvin was seen removing the serial numbers from the boat. Oh, wow. Marvin. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, Near where Rachel's body was found, um, a camper came forward during that time and testified that Marvin had asked if he could store his boat at this person's campsite, claiming he didn't have enough room in his. And the guy was like, basically said like, hell no, because he seemed really weird and was acting nervous. Yeah. So literally he placed himself there. So, the courts had to determine if he was mentally stable or not. If he could actually stand for trial. I mean, that probably really is a question with the quotes that you're telling me. I would also be like, is what is happening? What's wrong with him? Well, that's something I was going to ask you to decide by the end. Okay? Okay. Because this next part. Okay. Marvin, you know, he went through all the tests and everything. And the psychologist determined that Marvin had no mental illness and no brain injury from being slammed in the head, all of his fevers. He'd also been like in a few oh, car I forgot accidents. about that. Yeah. No, no brain injury at all. In fact, the psychologist testified that Marvin was faking the test he was given to determine his sanity. The psychologist gave him, basically, so I'm going to set you up with this, how they determined this. So the psychologist gave him a memory test where he had to look at 300 pictures. So if a person is actually struggling with this, um, they remember, like, so they get shown the cards again, like, of the pictures. Yeah. And they should remember, if a person's struggling, they should remember, like, it said 2550, which is a a statistic mark, basically, for getting them right. Which is, they're basing that completely off statistics of just, you know, yeah. what a person randomly guessing would do. Marvin received a 22. And the psychologist explained that is a sign of faking and intentionally getting things wrong by claiming he had never seen the before pictures that he showed him during the initial test. Like he chose 22 pictures? No. He received a score of 22 when a normal person just guessing would receive like a 25 to 50 okay meaning like he purposely got them wrong which caused a lower score i would like to see how i would do i would like to see too but it's like that isn't that genius yeah you could have foolproof in it too it's genius (laughs) i'm so impressed right now i can tell (laughs) so marvin was found guilty and he was sentenced to death right so he's done right were you right were you asking right right right. i don't know the story well (laughs) he was found guilty and sentenced to death during his sentencing hearing as soon as the judge read his sentence he punched his lawyer right in the face stop it flat out punched him right in the face did they think it was appropriate for him to not be shackled between two marshals (laughs) i know like at one point was he having good behavior (laughs) he 
also, like, I mean, he was also like inciting riots in the jail. Like, I mean, he at no point was okay. <laughs> the judge even remarked, like, if you were to get out of jail at any time in your life, you would cause the exact same problems. Basically, yes. like you are a danger, sir. <laughs> Um, this was kind of controversial that he was sentenced to, the, sentenced to death because uh, Michigan does not have a death penalty. But since he, Rachel's body was um, killed, or since she was killed on this federal forest, it became a federal co- crime. Okay. And one other thing I forgot to even mention, which is really sad. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Rachel was alive when she went into the water. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is really what influ- influenced One of the top them. fears. Yeah. Which is what really God. pushed for the death penalty. And why, since then, it's been tried to be overturned so many times because Michigan doesn't believe in it, but the feds do. Yeah. Um, but since it was so heinous that they, the federal government would not let up on the death sentence. Since she was alive. I don't alive, blame them. Since she was alive and like that hell she must have went through. Yeah. Wayne Davis's body was found in um 2002 it was found right like really close to where um rachel's body was actually found too he just keeps dumping people in the same area that's so weird it took him long because it was it seemed shallow yeah right there no it was right there you know what i mean it was shallow but they said with rachel's body it actually like i don't know how but it floated up from like bacteria and stuff like a decomposing body floated up i don't know why wayne's didn't but um, it was found in the same area. Um, so this part's sad too. So Shan's body has never been found. What? Yeah, the baby's never been found. Um, Marvin did like to run his mouth though. So while he's been incarcerated, he did tell people that he killed Shannon um, and threw her in the lake, just like her mom. And he said, quote, um, he had no other place to put her. So he killed her. He is a monster. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it's believed she's dead. There's never been any kind of witness sighting of her. Um, and Marvin even tried to impress his fellow inmates by drawing a map of this lake area and putting exactly where he had placed, you know, Wayne's body, John's body, Rachel's body, and Shan's body. So, no other, you know, I mean, since then, no other information has been released on the case. But is he still alive? I'm going to get to that. So, Marvin has not stopped stating his innocence. And Except I, for the map. Except for the map. <laughs> yep. That Just sometimes. Doesn't count. Okay? Oh, okay, right. Hearsay. <laughs> he's framed. Right. All right. So, he's never stopped stating his innocence. And he filed recently, I mean, within the past couple years, filed this giant motion for appeal basically like he wrote this letter about himself and it's i'm just gonna (laughs) pause for a second okay with all this crazy ass considerations attached to it that made no sense because now he started blaming someone else that wasn't even the chase guy you know what i mean another fake person another fake person's being brought up now so i had the pleasure of reading eight pages of this and i was getting so annoyed he yeah. basically just kept saying like poor Rachel but it was all him being a victim Ew. all him being a victim man Yeah, and then a lot of things about Nazis and a lot of things about like society as a whole like society as a whole is like some people are like selfish or greedy or yeah. do some politics in there like it was real weird okay it didn't make any sense I even struggled reading it he capitalized random words I don't know why what was important <sighs> what wasn't important I wrote, <laughs> so in this thing he he had, like, because I guess he's allowed to post things through other people online. Yeah. He put literally a picture of himself, and it's a picture of him in prison, and it's the quote on top of it says, and asks the public to please judge him because he is an innocent man behind bars. Please judge him. Please judge him. Because if they actually judged him, he they would see he was innocent. I don't feel like we will. No. I am not feeling that vibe. I am judging him. I am very right much judging now. him. Yes. Um, 
I wrote in here the entire letter was almost unreadable and filled with so much additional bullshit not related to the case <laughs> and so much blame on others that I want to convict him for being an asshole. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know if I said this or not, but Rachel's case was shown on Unsolved Mysteries. Okay. Yeah. And that was even before um, they found um, Wayne's body and everything like that, too. So Wayne was brought up in it too, um, and then Marvin also in that that picture he wrote the like that of the lake where he showed the body. Yeah. He wrote one of one slash three on it, meaning one body had been discovered, but three remains on that picture where he put the bodies at. He's not very smart. He's not. So Rachel's parents have obviously never given up, hoping that Shannon is alive. She has been declared dead at this point. Oh, my God. That's so sad. But, you know, there's all kinds of composites of her, like, 15 years later. Yeah. You know what I mean? As an adult. Um, for a long time, Marvin wrote letters to Rachel's parents, promising that he would reveal the location of the baby. Um, you know, and all kinds of nasty other things. Um, but they said he said that he would only do it if they would send a picture of, of Shannon to him. Ew. Yeah. Um, I don't know what he, all he put in there, you know what I mean? But eventually, like, out of desperation, they sent him a picture of Shannon. And he was found being very inappropriate with the picture. Oh. My God. I know. Um, the only shining light in some of this is um, Rachel's parents um, ended up becoming foster parents after all this. After Rachel's brother, who... Um, Basically, he was born. He was not very healthy when he was born, so he had, like, yeah. lifelong illness. He ended up dying at 17. So after he passed away, they became foster parents. And, like, even, like, they, these foster kids loved them. Yeah. They absolutely loved them. And there was one case where, like, they were watching, like, a two-, four-, and eight-year-old for, like, a couple months. And then the eight-year-old came back to them when he was 16 Aww. and asked if he could live with them full-time because he just missed them and remembered how good they were to him. Dude, that's precious. There's one more thing. One more thing. I watched a YouTube video. I'm scared. Okay. okay. This is gonna... I watched a YouTube video of this guy who had wrote Marvin a letter in 2020. And Marvin responded. Basically, it was almost... You know, as crazy as the letter he wrote defending himself even a couple years back... But he responded to the guy in this weird way. He even asked this man if he wanted to earn extra income, which is super weird. I don't know what that was about, and he didn't know either, and he was very weirded out by it. <laughs> but the main takeaway from this is that he was definitely not guilty, and he mm-hmm. was going to die, you know, an innocent man. Right. Framed. And. By the. By the judge. Nazi. By the Nazi judge. Yep. And that contrary to what everyone believed he was going to go to heaven okay oh he was going to go to heaven when he you know finally hit his um date of execution Mm -hmm. unlike that judge that passed away a few years ago that satanic judge who went to hell i am fully dead right now he ended the letter by sending a bunch of things related to covid to to the man and said that since covid had happened he had been working on a cure to help assist a scientist. I am. I no. Now he just took it way too far. <laughs> he threw all these random words in there that didn't even make sense. Like they're like just big words. You know what I mean? That sounded sounded <sighs> medical. He claims innocence and still says he's innocent. So he should be hitting death row. Like they should be doing his execution date in the next one or two years, probably. He's still alive. Dude. So batshit crazy. Like, I don't think he's batshit crazy. I think he is an idiot when he's drinking. And I think that he's evil. But I don't think he's crazy. I think he faked all that crazy shit. I think it's hard to... I don't think he's crazy either. I don't think he's crazy. I think he's that evil that I he think can he's keep evil, up with it. And I think he's one of these people we all know one that is like so into 
I don't even want to say politics because I feel like it's above and beyond Mm -hmm. that of like the government's trying to control us. Um, you know who I'm like the people I'm talking about and they just like that's their whole life Mm -hmm. he's very is convincing everyone that Mm -hmm. everything we do is wrong because they're right because they're right so much more than someone else yeah I think that he had a very high IQ and he didn't fill it with any kind of good knowledge he just kept putting a bunch of bad shit in there wow that one was really crazy that kept me on the edge of my seat yeah a lot as i went through the story it just kept getting crazier how did you find out about it well uh it was so i oh my gosh i looked up so many cases for this one today yeah. i mean i read so many cases um and finally i found him or uh, found rachel's story yeah that was i saw rachel's story and then i was like well, what's going on with marvin let's go back a little bit and so then i found all this out too and it was on like this ranked thing website it was just like crazy stories. I was like yeah. looking at it and I started diving into the court cases. And I saw that they had a whole transcript of the court case. And I love those ones. I know you do. Because I went through the court You're all into it. I don't. I'm like, is there a documentary on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That okay. is the sad story of Rachel, Wayne, and Shannon. I don't really care about weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. Dude. Yeah. That was crazy. Okay, well, I feel like you just in so much more depth than your research. <laughs> when I, I'm like, let's just type this out real quick. No, it's just <laughs> fine. You didn't. I really liked your. Oh wait, they weren't going to know that we did a story before this. So, <laughs> <laughs> can I get it to ding ding so, before we go? <laughs> can we get it to ding ding? Random one. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I can't. Okay. Okay. So yes, go over and um. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Um, and if you want us to cover a case or have like a crazy story of your own, you can email us at yeah. murderwordspodcast at gmail.com. We love those ones. And keep watching our Facebook page for serial killer trivia. Tips slash and or facts did I you say loved, tips and tricks i said tips and tricks, tips and tricks. <laughs> that's for <probably laughs> <more> serial killers <laughs> okay all right i'm gonna go <laughs> all right talk to you next week bye, bye. bye.